All right, so I've already established that I would prefer to use the loft tool for this particular situation, but the SolidWorks folks doth protest. If you talk to SolidWorks or you talk to the, the designers over there that work on the software, they'd say, why are you using loft? That's such an old school tool. The algorithms are so old, you really should be using the boundary surface. It's so much more sophisticated. You can do so many more things. Well, let's, let's take a look at that, shall we? I'm going to right-click on this loft and hide it. Okay, so we're back to basics, and I'm going to click on my boundary surface, and I'm going to create the exact same surface that I did using the loft. I'll click in direction one, I'll click my first curve and my second curve, right? And we still get our degenerate point up here in the middle, works exactly the same way. And then in direction two, I'll choose my third curve, just like before. Now, this looks cleaner. The display of this surface looks nicer than the old one, if, you'll, if you remember what that looked like. But uh, you'll see why I don't think it actually is uh, in a minute. So first of all, we have a slightly different protocol for how to set up the uh, tangency at either side here. We have to select this guy and say uh, normal to profile, right, to get that to shoot straight out normal. Here's a really important thing, though. Um, SolidWorks is a little bit buggy, actually, when it comes to the boundary surface. Uh, choosing normal to profile here may or may not actually stick over here. So every time you click it, uh, out here in the viewport, you should also double check over in direction one. Make sure that it says normal next to that curve because it might not it might not do it the first time. It might just forget that you did it. There we go. So now those are both normal across the middle. I won't actually change anything else about this because I want to give an apples to apples comparison between this and the loft tool. Okay, so we'll click OK, and we do get a surface that looks pretty good. And uh, at a glance, this looks pretty much exactly the same as the loft tool did, right? So I'll show my loft. So those are both visible here in our viewport. I'm going to grab that surface loft surface body up here at the top uh, of my feature manager design tree. I'll say insert features and then move slash copy. That's going to let me move that body straight on up. I'm just going to drag that up here and do not copy, right? I'm not going to check the copy box. I'll just hit OK. And now we have our two things side by side. Now, remember, the bottom one here, this is the boundary surface, and the top one is the surface loft. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now, let's rotate these around and uh, see if we see any difference for right off the bat, and I do. Can you see that? Can you see how you're getting a little bit of wonk there in your surface? All right, well, that might just be a trick on the eyes. It might not be a big deal, right? Well, let's go ahead and create the rest of this surface. So I'll go to my features, mirror, and for my mirror plane, we'll choose the right plane, bodies to mirror. I'm going to mirror both of these and make sure to knit surfaces when they go across. Hit OK. And I'll do my mirror again on the other side. We'll grab my, let's see, my front plane and bodies to mirror. We'll choose these guys and make sure to knit surfaces right across. And now you're going to see, look at this. You can see a big difference here. Look at the bottom. You see that that boundary surface is uh, getting some wonks right in the middle. That degenerate point is much worse on the uh, boundary surface than it is on the loft. Further, we can actually evaluate this in a more concrete method. We'll go to uh, our Evaluate tab and click on the Curvature Analysis. And that's going to put curvature on our surfaces uh, in color. So the red areas are really curved, um, the, or the green areas are super curved, and then there's red kind of in between, and then there's blue in between, and it goes all the way down to black, which is pretty much flat. But you can see that on our loft, that's nice and clean. We have black in the middle, gray, blue, green, red, and nice and smooth all the way across. Whereas look at this boundary surface, right? You do still have the same basic pattern, but in the middle, we have this nasty green stripe that comes down the middle. That means there's a wobble there, folks. And if you look at this red area, it's kind of red on the sides, but in the middle, it kind of fades to green. So we're getting definitely some curvature strangeness happening with this. If we turn that off and turn on our zebra stripes, then you'll see that in the zebras as well. We have a very nice, clean zebra stripe on the loft, and we have a really wonky one on the, uh, on the boundary surface. Now, uh, one might protest that you can actually do more with the boundary surface. If I uh, edit that feature, I can crank up the tangent influence here up to, say, 100% on that uh, direction, which might improve my situation. And when we turn on our curvature, actually it didn't. It actually made it worse. You'll see that uh, that green stripe we had at the bottom is more distinct than it was before. And uh, on our zebra stripes, 
it'll still it'll actually be nice and smooth across the middle, but it's going to make those wonks even more apparent. So I hope that I've convinced you, and I hope that I've convinced the SOLIDWORKS people that it makes sense to keep both loft and boundary uh, in play because they're both powerful tools. The boundary surface is an amazing tool that does great, great stuff that loft cannot do. However, uh, for simple surfaces like this, uh, and in this case in particular, I'm definitely going with the loft. All right, let's move on.